never do business with lawyers. <laughs> I'm just playing. Dave, let's dive in. He's a lawyer. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, folks. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. For those of you that are new to the show, new to Holton Wise TV, new to the channel, what this is, this is a show where we work with you. You get to work with us one-on-one. -on -one. We help you build your real estate portfolio. We give you unbiased advice, analysis. Then after the fact, we can handle your property management, insurance, title, construction, all that. So if all of that sounds like it's appealing to you, can you do us a favor, show us some love, and smash that subscribe button and give us a little thumbs up. Let the uh, Google algorithm know you're getting some good value out of here. Now, this uh, show right here, this is for a client of mine. His name is Dave. Dave, you're an attorney. You're a lawyer. Local cat, and we've actually... Uh, been working with you quite some time. Now, in the real estate industry, real quick, I was kind of joking with them at the beginning of the show, but that's actually, let's talk about that for a second, right? Uh, let me give a little little tip out there to everybody else who's out there. Maybe you're just watching this show just so you can get some information and education and training on how to be a good property manager. Guys, attorneys, lawyers, people that work for attorneys, people that work for lawyers, they don't make great tenants, right? I was kidding with Dave. Like, we got no problem with Dave. Dave's been a customer of ours for quite some time. He's a great investor, um, smart guy. We like working with him. But hey, when you're screening your tenants, guys, discrimination is good. You should absolutely discriminate against your tenants. Now, when I say that, don't think I'm saying you should discriminate against them in ways that are illegal, right? Things that violate fair housing. No, 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 no. As investors, we cannot discriminate them when they're in a protected class. I'm talking race, sex, uh, ethnicity, uh, sexual orientation, things of that nature, age, right? You don't discriminate against people in that way. Right, But we do, as landlords, discriminate them every day. Are they a violent felon? We could discriminate against violent felons. Do they have tattoos on their face? We could discriminate against that if we want. You know, Things of that nature. Do they have poor credit? Right, We're allowed to discriminate in that way. And one of the things that make your job as a landlord or a property manager tougher is if your tenant has either free legal or dramatically cheap legal, and they can really go to war with you. My advice, I'm not saying everybody who's a tenant that's an attorney is going to necessarily be a bad tenant. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is if you do get into a battle with that person, you're at a disadvantage. So if you're playing the odds, it might not be a bad idea to push them aside and work with another tenant who's got a better shot at not providing you problems, right? Whenever you got to go to battle, you always want to put yourself in the position to win. Just a little bit of advice. Plus, I wanted to start the show off with that little joke on my dude, Dave. But Dave, that aside, back to you, brother. And hey, even though Dave is an attorney, just so you guys know, that, that's still kind of our same thought, right? Dave's an attorney, but we don't want Dave to have to go to a legal battle with another attorney type deal, right? Now, of course, the particular uh, property I'm about to show you, based upon the pricing of the property and uh, the neighborhood quality, things of that nature, probably not going to be something that's going to attract an attorney anyway. Just a little bit of advice for you guys, though, right? So what you're trying to do, Dave, you're trying to spend around 70 to 100 grand. You got a few duplexes with us, similar. So I thought this would be a great one for you. Now, the last couple properties you bought from us, uh, it's been a little while since you've made another round of investment. So just so you know, you've been paying attention to the Cleveland market, and obviously you're local. Uh, so you know the prices have gone up just a little bit. Um, I saw this one, and I thought this would be a great property for us to try to target because the prices are so high. This one is just stagnant because these sellers, they're being unreasonable, and they listed it too high. Currently, it's at 110000 still too high, but they listed the sucker even higher. They listed it at like 130 been on the market 142 days and if they don't get down from 110 if they're only willing to take 110 it's just going to sit there because nobody should be paying 110 for this sucker right i think we should pay 90 now it's a, again a little bit higher uh than some of your previous investments but you know it is what it is i could 
only sell you what's available. And as you know, man, the market's going up, the market's going down. Right now, it's currently up, right? So 90 Gs, right? So even though they're at 110, man, I, I, don't, want you, I don't want you to pay that, dude. I think 90s, that's it. Top, top. What we're going to get, right? What are we going to get? Well, we're going to get a nice little occupied duplex, man. It's pretty nice. Right, traditional Cleveland duplex, nice little neighborhood. You got two tenants already in there, and some things that I liked about this, like look at the kitchen, right? It's already pretty updated, right? Now, whenever these tenants do move out, I'm going to go over their rents in a minute because they are below market value. Whenever we do have to do your next turn to get new tenants in, look, we're not going to have to put new cabinets in. These are nice. Looks like we got a nice little countertop. We even got the backsplash, right? So when I see a turnover here, I'm just seeing some paint, right? That floor, that floor is great. We don't have to do anything with that floor. That is going to work for us. Sorry to got the hardwoods. You know, it's hard to tell from these photos if they're already been refinished. If not, we'll refinish them. But this next turnover is going to be simple, man. I'm looking at, like, locks, smoke detectors, clean it. Uh, maybe patch a couple holes. I mean, we got a considerable amount of photos here, but you know, minor stuff, right? Nothing major. We're not really having to do a lot to the kitchens and baths where it gets expensive because they're already pretty modern. So that is quite nice, right? Now, after that turnover, when we get to market, Dave, we should be bringing in 1500 a month or 18 Gs a year. What that would look like, you know, standard uh, average expenses here, right? You've had properties in our portfolio for years now, so you kind of you kind of understand the lay of the land. I anticipate 753 going out. That should be an average NOI of 747, 8964 per the year. You know, pretty consistent with the other properties in your portfolio here. Now, we're not there yet, though, right? We're not there yet. Currently, though, one of those tenants is paying six and a quarter, the other's paying 550. Now, as a seasoned investor, Dave, you're probably already down with this, but I just want to give everybody else who's, you know, watching this a little insight as well, just like uh, previously talking about some. You know, tenant strategy. Here's another good tenant strategy, guys. 750 is great, right? That's the market rent. You guys won't get that 1500 a month. I get it. That makes sense. But don't get too greedy. Don't get crazy. Don't want to jump. Don't try to make your tenant jump from 550 to 750 like that because you think you need it to hit your numbers. You're not going to make more money than that. You're not going to make more money doing that, guys. You're going to lose money, right? Because what that's going to do, that's going to create artificial turnover, right? The little bit of money that you're missing, right, you're going to lose that by having to miss rent for a couple months, having to do a tenant turnover renovation, having to pay my team a leasing fee, all that stuff, right? We don't make money without butts in our units, right? We want to keep butts in our units, and we never want to just jack someone's rent up and create an artificial turnover. Dave already knows this. He's got multifamily properties. You're going to get turnovers, guys. You're going to pay Holton Wise turnover bids, right? You're going to pay us some money to freshen these units up, right? Whenever you get a turnover, that's a hit to your bottom line, okay? Nobody should like turnovers or be excited for turnovers. Please do not send money to Cleveland and then hope you could remove an income stream immediately so you could send more money to Cleveland. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like your money. I like when you send me money. I like when you pay my construction team to do your renovations. I like when you pay my leasing team to lease out your property. That's great. But that does not make your bottom line go up, guys. What I want to see Dave do is I want to see us take over this property. Right after you take over a property with inherited tenants, especially when it's like, tenants that are dealing with a mom and pop landlord and then a big bad you know corporation like holton wise comes in right like we're the we're the biggest landlord in town right there's nobody with uh more trucks on the road more signs in yards more doors in their portfolio of this type of stuff than holton wise right so we are exactly the opposite of a mom and pop landlord. So whenever people change landlords, the tenants, they get a little nervous, they get a little jumpy, right? And that's a huge dramatic shift. And when they get jumpy, they, they, they tend to want to retreat. They tend to want to move out, right? So you couple that with a big old lease increase, uh, rent increase with the new lease, man, that's going to create some turnover. We don't want to see that happen, right? So we like to take the properties over, keep the rents where they are if they're close, which these are... You know, you could still make some money off these rents. You're, just, you're not lighting the world on fire, but they're not. you're not losing a ton of money or anything of that nature. So we like to keep the rents the same, get the tenants on a new one-year lease in case we do need to evict that tenant. We always want to have inherited tenants on our leases, man. You know, that's another legal trick, right? When you're going to court, you do not want to have to go to court with a tenant who just 
you know, had their landlord transfer the property and the new landlord doesn't have a lease with them and they've never paid the new landlord rent. Because what tenants are going to do, they're going to pull this trick out and this will work every time. It might not necessarily win the case, but it'll at least delay the case a month. The tenant can have the very simple defense of, oh, I paid the previous landlord. I didn't know who I was supposed to pay or I paid the previous landlord. You know, a variation of that, right? And the judge, at the very least, will continue that case, right? So what we really want to do when these people are in these properties, we want them to sign our leases. And it makes it super easy if we can pitch to them, hey, you know, how about you come in and sign this lease? Don't worry, your rent's not going up. Even if they have a couple months left on their terms, which by law we need to adhere to, like if they have four months left on their lease, you cannot legally compel them to sign a new lease with you even though you bought the property. You have to accept all terms of that lease till it expires unless the tenant will voluntarily sign your new lease. And the best way to do that is to go ahead and get them on your lease without a rental increase. You say, hey, man, come sign this lease. You have all info. You know all the rules, and don't you worry. Our rent, your rent's not going up for at least 12 months. They will happily come in and sign that lease. And then if something happens, you do have an issue, they try to stiff you on payment, boom, we go to court. We win the case. We have the advantage. Remember, don't go to court. Don't go to battle when you do not have the advantage against your competition, right? So that's why I would do that. That's my plan. But then eventually we'll get that rent up to the 1500 Dave. And that's when the property should project out at a 10 cap with a 21.5% cash on cash return. Because you're not looking to do a bunch of reno, man. You're looking for something easy. You got a lot of income coming in from your day job. So you just want to put up some of your cash. Let the fact that you're qualified for a bunch of mortgages work for you. Let it grow your portfolio. You're only going to need to put about 22 and a half into this. And eventually we'll get you up to that rent. I'd like to see us do it without as, tur as many turnovers as possible. You know, we go with these tenants for a year. And then maybe next year we do a small increase, 25 bucks. And then the following year, we may eventually get you to 1500 without a turnover. At least we'll try to get you to 1500 without an artificial turnover. That would be the most profitable way to do it. But, of course, if one of them does move out, then we'll have to spend a few grand. But like I said, the kitchens, they're looking pretty good. It seems to be fairly moderate, fairly easy property. So that's why I think it'll work for your portfolio, brother. I think it's a great addition to what you got. Uh, reply to this email. I'm sending this to you in a, a private email right now. Just reply. Uh, me and my team of assistants uh, will work with you. Let us know the number you want to offer. I'd love to see you pick it up at 90, so I'd like to start maybe like 88 and uh, see what happens. And then, of course, we'll schedule your third-party home inspection, and we'll help you get it scheduled with the appraiser. Uh, and, of course, if you want to tour the property with the inspector at that time, uh, we can do that, right? We just can't set it up where we bug tenants all the time. That would be crazy. But, you know, the sellers, you know, we can go under contract. They'll know you're serious. we got the inspector out there since you're a local guy. If you're compelled to want to physically be uh, at the property, too, we'll work that out with the seller, try to make that happen for you, brother. And uh, then, of course, we'll onboard it to your portfolio like your other properties. Everybody else, if uh, this level of service, this level of one-on-one -on -one work and insight with me is appealing to you, just so you know, you can get it as well. Go to the Property Search for Sale button. Click the MLS Search and Analysis Show and order a package today. I like the big packages, the four pack and the 10 pack, because not every deal goes through. So it's nice to get me and my team's resources, allow us to dedicate this much to you over the long term, right? Like, I want Dave to get this at 90. Well, that seller currently today is still trying to get 110. So maybe this deal doesn't actually go through. But unless Dave is like, fuck it, let's just pay 110, you know, I can't guarantee the seller is going to take it. But hey, that's why we got to do a couple properties together to try to get a good deal, right? We got to put some other lines in the water to try to get you guys the good deal unless you just want to overpay for things. And if you do, shit, let's, let's offer them 110. But I'm going to try my best to get it for you for 90. And if they don't want to take that, before I seen you pay 110, I'd like to show you a few other properties and we'll try the same type of strategy. That's all. That's all I got for today's show, guys. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise. And this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world.
U.S. REIB is a full-service turnkey provider offering investors the opportunity to purchase single-family and multifamily investment properties in Cincinnati, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, and Kansas City, Missouri. The purchase process is seamless, from reserving a property to obtaining financing, inspections, and insurance referrals. U.S. REIB has a dedicated team in place to manage the process from start to finish. In addition, U.S. REIB is also directly integrated with its own private placement fund for accredited investors. The fund seeks to raise $10 million to capitalize on the repositioning of distressed single-family and multifamily real estate. Based in Indianapolis, Indiana, FS Houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches, FS Houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit FSHouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. RentTech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With RentTech Direct, you will also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and RentTech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia, and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.